Next question is from Janky Garage Jim. If you have horrible all around mobility, should you focus on one area first and then move on to the next one once that's okay? Or is it better to do a bit on all of the problem areas? I don't think that there is a wrong or right answer to this. Um, I think it's uh, before we go in and give our points here or what our advice, I think it's important to note that uh, whatever works for you is important. Um, personally, uh, the success that I've had with working on mobility has come from my, and with myself and clients has been focusing on like one or two things. The gross offenders. Yeah. Like it That's looks, usually my advice. Yeah. I look at the, the gross offenders and in, in, in my case uh, was my lack of ankle mobility was the lack of my hip mobility. Those are the two biggest things that uh, kept me from having a comfortable, deep, good squat. And so uh, I began work, and I and I picked one or two movements that I I felt the the greatest change or improvement for those two areas, and just fucking drilled those home like crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think if you so when we talk about mobility training, we sometimes we tend to separate it from uh, resistance training. So we think that there are different rules that yeah. apply to mobility training because it's not resistance training. The reality is mobility training improperly is resistance training. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the goal is a little different. The goal with mobility training isn't to build muscle and create you know uh, tons of tension through compound movements or whatever. More you're, stability and control. You're just trying to control in, in, in direct uh, connection to muscles and to movements, but the same rules apply. So what are the rules with resistance training? Will you get better results if you train your whole body and do one set of an exercise for legs, one set for chest, one set for back, one set, and then go all through the whole body and then repeat that, or do you get better results if you do all your sets for legs, then do all your sets for chest, then do all your sets for back? And the truth is, the there's more value, you get better results when you do one movement, one exercise, focus on that at a time. Now, the studies do show that the most of the gains that you get go to the first few exercises. That doesn't mean you don't get gains in the other exercises. It's just when we measure them, and, and studies will show this, if you squat at the beginning of your workout, you're going to get more gains on your squat than if you did your squats at the end of the workout. So the advice uh, would be the advice I would give to somebody if they said, hey, if I have a weak body part, should I you know, focus on that or whatever? Focus on, like Adam said, the gross offenders, uh, or I think Justin said that. Focus on the, the big mobility issues first do all your stuff there. Wait till that's okay before you move on. Because going through the whole body, yeah, you'll it, still get benefit. But it'll it's cascade. Like once you really do, like pinpoint uh, whether it's like my shoulder joint. Like I just can't, uh, you know, I can't rotate a, a specific way, and like that actually like impedes on me lifting weights over my head. And so, you know, to gain more stability and, and control over that, now that's that's building better movement patterns overall. And then the same, you know, whether it's my ankles or it's my hips that are affecting my knees, you know, something like that to where now I can work on squatting. My technique's going to get better. My movements overall are going to kind of form into these better patterns, and then it's going to help my overall there, system. There's also a little bit of a difference between priming and mobility, although there's a lot of crossover. So, like, we have two programs. One is called MAPS Prime. One is called MAPS Prime Pro. Now, priming is a little bit different. Priming is to set yourself up for the exercise that you're about to do. So, I prime my body so I get good movement patterns so I can perform a barbell squat better right now. Mobility work is really much more correctional. Like my goal with mobility work isn't necessarily to do the next exercise better. It's to correct a problem. It's a little yeah. bit more intense, a little bit more focused, and there's more work that's that's being done. So it really depends on how you're using this. If you're If you're just working the whole body, you can prime the whole body. Um, and that'll give you some benefit. Well, and I think this is a good question because you see a lot of like Instagram accounts and that are like mobility based that like you just see them doing like every body part, you know, right. everything like yeah. every day you have to accomplish like all these like crazy movements and it's gotten so out of control where, you know, for me, I, I, I enjoy mobility and I, that's something that I really brought in that, you know, had, had transformed the way that I worked out. But at the same time, like I'm sticking with like my three main ones and, and that's like the workout. Are, is where I get you know all the benefit. That's yeah. such a good point because I know that it's become a, a buzz term, and the the big pages like the big mobility pages are the the guys or girls that are like hyper mobile and like they every day they're posting a new cool mobility exercise, 
And because it's become a buzz, a buzz term, people listening to the podcast, including our podcast, they see stuff like that and they're just trying to emulate all these different mobility moves. Yep. Mm-hmm. When in reality, what will benefit you the most is to be hyper focused on one or two moves yeah, get, that, get that are very specific to your body. Like you have, you have terrible, let's say, you know, rotation in your shoulder. Like, Doing handcuff with rotation is like such a great move. You don't need to go do some fancy lizard animal flow thing that you saw your favorite mobility guy or girl do, right. you know, because it looks cool and it's quote unquote good for you. You need to be doing the the one thing that is really going to have the greatest impact on your personal uh, mobility issues that you're dealing with. You know, it's funny you brought this question up too, because I just did a, a, a YouTube video that should go live real soon here. And uh, it actually was wasn't something planned at all. I was doing some st- I was doing some mobility work myself, and uh, Eli come walking out of the office, and he's like, "Hey, can I can I video you what you're doing?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that, that's cool." And so he just he just off the cuff came over and just started videoing me and, and having me explain what I was doing. And one of the things that I was doing is I do this thing now where I walk up on the squat rack. I get all the way down into the deepest squat. I do a combat stretch. I drive my knees open and open my hips up. I retract and squeeze my shoulder blades together. And I, I, I tuck my chin and work on my... So I'm literally like addressing the entire... It's a combo. Yeah, it's literally like four... Now, what I explain in the video when he's talking or when he's uh, filming me is that this is the result of me working diligently on 9090 on combat stretch at zone 1 and the forward head stuff that we do was I work so much at that that I I can I can connect really well I know what I need to do so now I can get down in a single move you know a single mobility move which I think is a really cool uh thing that uh, I do to warm up now but I had to first do all the other, you know, boring ass single 9090 type stuff to get to that point. And that's the the what we're trying to explain is that, you know, just because you see me do this one cool move, like if you haven't done all the prerequisites to get to that point, it's kind of meaningless for you to try and just to attempt to do that. Like, th- you, if you have trouble just connecting to uh, ankle mobility, you're not going to do yourself any good by throwing shoulder and hip and you know neck mobility into it all right. at once you know you advanced yourself uh to that point so if you want to improve uh con- more consistently and effectively you're probably better off focusing on those specific areas of your body picking the best movements and mastering those before you decide to add you know lots of other things not to mention that that's where you're going to see the greatest change too it's not like you're going to do a mobility move and you're going to be like, wow, I'm just so much more mobile now. I did those two or three cool mobility exercises. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of consistency and frequency of doing a, a mobility drill that's trying to address the lack of mobility you have in a certain joint before you start to see serious change mm-hmm. or feel a major difference. So even for the psychological reason, it makes more sense to just focus on one area of dysfunction like Prime Pro, where Prime Pro, we, we go through every major joint in the body and you have a test and then you have moves that you should do to improve that range of motion in that joint. You're far better off. Like you'll go, most people will go through like Prime Pro and you know most people will probably fail almost all the tests because a lot of us because we are seated and, and older, like we, we, a lot of us have dysfunction in all of our joints. So you go, oh my God, I have all these problems. I need to do all these moves. It's like, no, that'll get overwhelming. Like pick one, like Justin said, the, the greatest, you know, the, the gross offend, the, the greatest gross offender of all of them. And just like drill that home, do that two, three, four, five times a day for a few minutes every day. And you will see after a few weeks, you'll notice a, a incremental change starting to happen already. And once you kind of make that connection, it's definitely psychologically a lot more motivating to see the change in progress versus doing all of these weird mobility drills and doing different ones every single day. And is it really helping? I think I'm supposed to do this. Mm-hmm. Is it really alleviating this chronic pain? Am I getting any more range of motion? Really hard to tell. It's the same concept like Sal made the analogy to exercise. It's like the guy or the girl that goes to the gym and they do they fucking muscle confusion. 
you know, heavy squats, and they come over and do high reps over here, supersets over here, low rest periods here, and they like throw the whole kitchen sink at a workout. Sure, their body might get changed and they might see some results. It's really hard to measure what's working the best for their body. So that's why I separate like one area that you need to work on, really get good at that and get better at that so you can see and feel a difference and then apply that and then add on. Mm -hmm. 